Hey y'all, good morning, happy Sunday. I hope everyone has had a great week and a wonderful weekend. Don't know what part of the country you live in, but down here on the Gulf Coast in Mississippi, it is unbelievably hot and humid and I hate it. So if you are enjoying fall like temps wherever you are, I'm super jealous right now. I wanted to say thank you so much for the ones that watched the video last week and reached out to me about how much it meant to them and how much they enjoyed the video. And I think that helped reaffirm the call that I feel in my heart about talking um, in regards to my depression, my anxiety, and my journey with both of those things along with my spirituality journey and um, the sessions that I'm having with my therapist. So I wanted to talk to y'all today about signs. I don't really know how many of you believe in signs or if you don't believe in signs, but um, I recently had a sign and I firmly 100%, 100% wholeheartedly believe in my heart that God was talking to me when, um, when I saw these signs. So I wanna backtrack a little bit and tell you so a couple of weeks ago, and it was probably when my depression and the sadness was um, at its worst. So I was crying really for no apparent reason. I really wasn't happy. I was so overwhelmingly sad and disappointed with life in general. And it was just getting to be so, so much for me. Um, I don't really know words to put it into perspective other than, you know, yeah, I have lots of things to be grateful for, but when your depression is, you know, pulling you down, it's really, really hard to get out of that hole by yourself. It really is. And though the rational part of your brain is telling you, you know, to fight it because you have so much going for you, the part of your, your brain that is suffering from this disease doesn't care. And the enemy doesn't care. The enemy being Satan, the devil, whatever you want to call him. Um, they don't care. You know, he's not going to come to you when you're happy, when you're on cloud nine, when you're ecstatic and life is going great and you have everything that you ever wanted. The enemy is not going to come for you then. The enemy is going to come for you when you are down on your luck, when your depression has got its claws in you, when everything in the world is going wrong and you just feel absolutely lost and defeated and with no hope. That is when he's going to come to you. That is when he's going to attack you because you know why? It's easier for him to tempt you. It's easier for you to look at temptation and fall victim to it. Um, so it's really important that you remember that and you keep that in mind the next time you are hurting. And I knew I was at that place. I knew that I was being tempted to make a not so smart decision um, when, you know, that same week, and it was a Thursday, I was driving home from work and I thought in my mind, and it was a fleeting thought, but I thought in my mind, I said, how easy would it be for me to drive my car off the road and into a tree? And everything that's been bothering me, all these problems, all these responsibilities, all of the things that have and overwhelmingly just pressed on me would cease to exist. I would not feel that anymore. I would not, I wouldn't have to worry about any of those things anymore. It would just stop existing. I would just stop existing. And y'all, it was at that point that I really knew, like that evening, I, I knew something was wrong. Something is wrong with me. There's no reason for me to feel like that. I've never thought like that in the past. I love life. Um, you know, I'm, I was always really excited for life and what it had in store for me. So for me to feel that way, I really knew that something was wrong. And I think subconsciously, um, by having these thoughts, I was also reaching out to God and asking him, for a sign, um, which I do that occasionally because I believe in signs. Um, so on Friday, 
As I was leaving work, I looked down on the ground and I see a gray feather. And I didn't really think too much of it, but as I got inside of my car, something inside me said, go back for your feather. This is your feather, go back and get it. And I'm so glad that I did because I grabbed my gray feather and I looked up what finding feathers meant, what finding gray feathers meant. And what I found was um, that feathers being found or placed in your path are ways that angels and God speak to you. Um, you know, there was different, different sections on what black feathers, white feathers, and gray feathers mean. And gray feathers, as it turns out, is a one of the most direct or indirect ways that angels or God can communicate with you. Um, you know, it's it's basically saying that the answers to your question are not yes or no, that you've got to keep going. You have to keep on your path to find the answers that you need to overcome these struggles, essentially. So I took a picture of my gray feather and I sent it to my husband. And an hour or so later, I was already on my way home, or I was home, excuse me, and Nick sends me a text message. Coffee y'all, by the way, and my head wig, Harry Potter mug. Who I love Harry Potter. Sorry, ADD's kicking in. So Nick texts me and he said, hey, Maverick just got off the bus with a gray feather. And I was just like, really? And he said, yeah, really. He, he just got off the bus with a gray feather. So at that point, I was like, okay, two gray feathers the same day, one given to my littlest love, who I completely adore, prayed for this little boy, y'all have no idea. Um, I was like, okay, all right, God, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you. I'm ready. I will take into account what you're telling me. I will listen. I will stop and I will listen. And then I, you know, basically gave thanks because I don't know that if I had not seen my feathers that I would have made the decision to reach out and make an appointment to my therapist. I don't know that I would have done that. So I, I gave thanks for my signs because they it made me feel like, okay, he really understands where, at what point I am in my life and he knows that I'm hurting and he knows that I'm struggling and he's sending me a sign that he's aware and that it's time for me to man up, so to speak, and take what's happening with me into my own hands, well, with his help, obviously, and get some help. Talk to somebody, a professional, and get some help and get better. It's important that I get better. I you know, kept saying that my soul was sick and that I was so tired, that my soul was so tired. And it, seeing my gray feathers are, um, were just the sign, the momentum um, that I was looking for to let me know that things were gonna get better and I was gonna be okay. So what does the Bible say about signs. So there's different parts of the Bible that talk about signs, um, like in Revelations. Um, but the scripture that I'm going to read from today is Isaiah 7 11. And it says, ask a sign for yourself from the Lord, your God, make it deep as shale or high as the heaven. Essentially ask the Lord, if you have something on your mind, if you need an answer, if you are wondering if this person that you've been seeing is the person for you, is your soulmate, is the person that God has in mind for you, if you have a life-changing decision about moving to a different part of the country, a different part of the world, if you should follow the path that you're on, ask God to give you a sign. And y'all, I promise you, he answers, he answers, but you have to be willing to take a step back, let go of what you are holding on to, and trusting that he's going to answer. And you have to be willing to accept the signs and the answers that he gives you. 
sometimes it's not the answer that you want. But that doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just means that he's listening to you, he answered you, and now you have a different course of action that you need to take. So, these are, these are my two gray feathers and I put them in my wallet um, and they go everywhere with me now. So anywhere I go, my wallet goes with me. So they are always with me. They probably always will be right there alongside me. And I, I can't express to y'all like how much I needed, I needed to see that and how much it meant that God sent my little boy home with a gray feather for his mama because he knew how much I love Maverick and how much I love my family and how important they are to me. So it was, it, it was just reaffirming the faith that I was starting to doubt. Whew, all right, so here we go. We are now going to start doing makeup. Yay, makeup. All right, okay, so I did my skincare. I mentioned in the last video that I did how important your skincare is. Your face is a blank canvas. Think of it like that. You have to prep and take care of your skin in order for your skin to take care of you. And the products that you put on your face matter. And letting your face soak in whatever moisturizers or serum <clears throat> you have before you put on your makeup is really important too. Otherwise, um, sometimes certain things, certain ingredients don't mix. And if you end up putting your foundation or your tinted moisturizer or whatever you put on your face, sometimes it doesn't really match well together. And it will actually start to separate and can, like um, your product starts to dissolve on your face and then you have to wash your face and start all over again. I don't know about you, but I typically don't have time to do that. So I'd much rather get up, put on my serum, put on my moisturizer, drink my coffee, let it have a little bit of time to soak in, and then I begin with the rest of it. Important um, little tidbit too about your skincare. You should, whatever you're using on your face, you should also be bringing it down to your neck and also your decolletage. So if you think about it, your chest area, your neck and your face are often visible at all times. Um, especially in the sun. So it's really important that you remember to put sunscreen on your face, here, here, and anything that you're using to treat your skin, whether it's to um, prevent wrinkles or reverse wrinkles or reverse the signs of aging, whatever. It's really important that you guys do that as well, okay? Um, now, I'm using one of those halo lights, which I really, really like, but at the same time, you can see when I start to bend over and I start to make uh, facial expressions, you can start to see the wrinkles that I have on my forehead. I'm not a spring chicken anymore, so you'll have to just take my word for it. I mentioned last week that I use a lot of products from Beauty Counter and that I am a Beauty Counter consultant. Anything skincare related wise, is all from Beauty Counter. I'm so glad that I made the decision to switch to them. They're cruelty free, the leaders in clean beauty, and they have a goal in, um, that by 2025 to go completely plastic free, which that's a really big deal to me. I'm very excited about that. Um, but they are not the only products that I use in terms of cosmetics. I still try very hard to purchase things that are relatively clean, have really good environmental goals in mind and that are also cruelty free. And one of the brands that I mentioned before in the past was Bare Minerals. I really like Bare Minerals. And um, before I discovered Beauty Counter, um, Bare Minerals was what I used every day um, for pretty much everything, even skincare. But, and there's nothing wrong with their skincare line. I just found that Beauty Counter and their products worked a lot better for my skin and um, I'm asthmatic, I have hypothyroidism, and your thyroid controls a lot of hormonal things and it can also impact your skin. So for a long time, I thought that there was something seriously wrong with me. My skin was getting very dry, patchy, scaly in some places, um, and it was really drying out and I never had that problem before. And um, 
a combination of my thyroid medication along with my beauty counter regimen has really, really helped. The overnight resurfacing peel, if there's one thing out there, like if beauty counter came to me and said, you can only buy one thing from us, what would it be? It would be my overnight resurfacing peel. That has made the biggest impact in my scare that I have noticed to date. I've used it for over a year and y'all, it's so good. It is my holy grail product. I promise I cannot say enough things about this and really nothing I say will make you buy. You just have to try it. You just have to be like, okay, she raves about it, let me try it. But that really is like a game changer for me. So with that being said, I want to go ahead and start my makeup. It's Sunday. I normally do like a lot of my prep cooking and cleaning and laundry and all of those things on Sunday. So I really wasn't planning on going anywhere. Um, and most of the time, I don't really put makeup on during the weekend because I feel like it gives my face some time to breathe. But we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of, um, you know, just a quick, a quick little makeup thing that I do on the weekends. So this is my Beauty Counter Concealer. It's in Skin Twin. Your Skin Twin Concealer, and it is in Light One. I'm very fair, y'all. Um, I don't really get dark, even if I lay out, which is bad. Don't lay out for hours upon hours. Um, but I'm very fair. My skin tone is light or pale with pink undertones. So it's really important that you find out what undertone you have. That will enable you to get um, a better match in terms of your tinted moisturizer, foundation, concealer, color corrector, that kind of stuff. So how do you tell? Well, one of the easiest ways that you can tell is to look at the inside of your wrist and look at the veins um, and Pinterest has a couple of examples and it'll show pictures and it'll be like, if you look like this, this or that, then you are, um, you have purple or blue undertones. If you're this, you're yellow, um, you're pale with yellow undertones or olive, like a dark with olive, um, yellow, peachy undertones. I'm a combination. I do have a little bit of yellow undertones, but the most prominent thing about me, especially if you like look at my chest, you can see the pink undertones kind of coming through. So I I just tend to go more to pale with pink undertones. And for the most part, it, it fits for me. So I put a little bit of concealer on my eyelids. And the reason why I do this is because it helps my eyeshadow stay in place, which is really important to me. I get up, I'll do my eyeshadow. By the time I've completed work, done dinner, help the kids with their homework, and I go to wash my face, my eyeshadow still looks exactly the same as it did when I put it on. So that's really important. If you have not done it before, I strongly suggest that you do. You can either use an, um, a primer or eyeshadow concealer, <laughs> eyeshadow concealer, or a concealer, excuse me all. Okay, so this is my Bare Minerals, the Power of Neutrals um, eyeshadow palette. And I've had it for a couple of years now these are the colors. They're so pretty, y'all. They're very neutral. I really like them. And I use them on a very regular basis. I'm going to take my Ulta Beauty Crease Brush. See the head? And I'm going to go ahead and I don't really want to go heavy on the eyeshadow today because I'm not going anywhere. So I'm going to use this really like lighter brown right here. And I'm going to do this on the outer corners of my eye and my crease. And I tend to do my eyeshadow first before I put on my concealer, color corrector under my eye, just because sometimes the eyeshadow will fall from your eyes and like collect down here. And I feel like it's easier for me to brush away after or before your, your foundation or tinted moisturizer. So you can see I started dark here and then I followed through on the inside of my crease. And my crease, if you have hooded eyes, they will tell you to do it right above, like so find your brow bone. So right here is my brow bone, 
right there. Um, so if you have hooded eyes, they tell you to do it right there. I kind of like mine to be right on the underside. Of, of my brow bone. Okay, see? All right. Now I'm going to take my, this is a buffing concealer brush. I use it to you sometimes as a, um, as blending my eyeshadows. So now I'm going to, well, I need to go back to my crease one. So I'm gonna take this really pretty shimmer brown tan and I'm going to put it right here on the bottom corner of my eyes see it's just really pretty is it that shimmer I love shimmer some people will tell you that after a certain age women shouldn't wear shimmer because X Y and Z and just let me tell you I'll be 40 next year in June and I'm never not gonna wear shimmer eyeshadow. Well, I'm never gonna not wear shimmer or anything because I love shimmer and glitter and all of the shiny things. Maybe I was a bird in my past life or a fish. Don't birds and fish like really shiny things? Anyway, okay, so I have that really pretty tan, shiny, shimmer. What color is this? Pops Lady. Moneymaker, it's called Moneymaker. Oh, I like that. Okay, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna go in with Payday, and that's this light color right here. And this is that buffing concealer brush that I was telling y'all about. So now I'm just gonna do the inside of my eyes and blend everything together. Go to the other side, do the same thing, blend. All right, so that's done. Now I'm going to take my supercharged under eye tint from Milani. So I love Milani, they are cruelty free as well, and Y'all, I was looking, a lot of YouTube makeup artists, that I'm not a makeup artist, but a lot of YouTube stars use Becca's under eye concealer, but I don't know if you know this or not, they're going out of business, which I hate that for them. So I went into Ulta and I was like, hey, I heard Becca is going out of uh, business and I need something that is similar to that concealer. So the girl that was working at Ulta was like, hey, Milani just put this out and it's really great, I think. So she's like, oh, I put too much. So really, you only need a dot of it, and I go like this just to put it on, you know, both of my ring fingers, and I gently pat. I don't smear, um, because I feel like if I do smear, then the product just ends up staying mostly in the part that your finger stopped moving at, so I tend to pat. And y'all, I have really bad um, bags under my eyes and discoloration. Sometimes it looks darker than others, but I'm a chronic sinus allergy sufferer. So on times when, or during times that the allergy, the allergens are really bad, the bags under my eyes get worse. They're puffier, the color, I look more sickly like I didn't get any sleep for days and days and I just really feel like the Milani um, brightening tint goes a long way it's not a it doesn't fix everything that's going on with my face but I really do think that it helps so I just let that set for a little while you know make, make sure that you pat it that it stays also using your ring finger your ring finger is the weakest of your fingers and your under eye area is really delicate. So try to remember to use these fingers, whether it's applying eye cream or um, makeup or corrector. So, you know, you don't hurt that delicate, really paper thin skin under your eye. It's, that's really important. Okay. I mentioned 
in my last video that I use tinted moisturizers instead of foundations. I'm not a huge fan of, um, of foundations for my skin. I feel like since I'm older now and I do have more wrinkles that my foundations tend to sit, um, settle in in the creases of my face, my the wrinkles, even if I do use a primer. But it just may be that I haven't found the best foundation for me. On another note though, I just am not a huge like heavy makeup wearer, wearer in terms of um, I make my face, my face look bam every single day and I'm not knocking anyone that is able to do that with their face. I just A, don't have the time to do that and B, it doesn't matter how many times I try to mimic the tutorials that I've seen, my face just does not look the same. And that has to do with the fact that I'm more mature now than I was than some of these like late 20s, early 30 makeup artists that I see on YouTube or Facebook. Um, Bailey Sarian is one that I follow. I love her. I just love her. Makeup, makeup, what is it? Murder, Murder Mystery Makeup Monday? Or is that the name of her YouTube channel? If you're ever one of those crazy people that love true crime and you love makeup, I strongly suggest that you go see her because her stuff is insane. And she gives it such a great twist with her personality and just her little like tidbits of conversation. Um, I, I love watching those. Okay, this is my Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream. Yeah, it's a gel cream and it's um, SPF 30. I've mentioned before how important SPF is. It's very, very important. The UV rays of the sun are the lead causing are the lead in causing the wrinkles that you get in your face. So it's one of the things that you need to strongly, strongly use, strongly use, I can't talk today, that I strongly suggest you use every day. Um, if you don't wanna put makeup on, then just get yourself an SPF that you can put on your face. Um, Beauty Counter has some great ones. Just remember, I always wear a hat as well, just to protect my face. The color that I'm using is Vanilla 2. So for those that are curious. And I'll take my Ulta Beauty Angled Foundation Brush. Sometimes I'll do the sponge. I did the sponge in my last video with my um, Tinted Moisturizer from Beauty Counter last week, but sometimes I like to change it up and I'll use my Angle Brush. And um, I feel like the finish is the same. It doesn't really look that different to me, but it's all on what you prefer, however you prefer. And I kind of just, you know, I, I go between pats and strokes. I like the pats more than the strokes just because I feel like it's not, um, I'm not wiping anything off really. Good. You know, make sure that you are spreading it evenly all over your face so everything gets the attention that it needs and deserves. Okay, so I think I'm good with that. Okay, so that's done. All right, now I'm gonna go back to my Skin Twin concealer. I'm going to put a dot here and a dot here, a dot here and a dot here. I see a lot of people doing um, the triangles or sometimes the squares right under your eye. And again, it probably works great for people who are younger than me. But I find that I can't do that because once again, the more product that I put underneath my eye, the more it settles into the creases and wrinkles. And my eyes are one of the places that you can definitely tell my age. So I try not to draw a lot of attention to my under eye area. So now I'm taking a buffing foundation brush. Again, this is from Ulta. And, um, and I pat. I pat, pat, pat. 
and I do the same thing to the other side. I don't sweep because again, I'm, I'm not trying to wipe the product off. I'm trying to get it to evenly, evenly, excuse me, to evenly stay on my face. Okay, so my bags aren't totally gone. The discoloration isn't totally gone, but it looks a lot better than it did when I first started putting on my makeup. So now I don't look like somebody who's auditioning for a zombie role in The Walking Dead. Okay, so now that that's done, I use, this is a banana setting powder and it is from Bella Pierre Cosmetics and it's also cruelty free. So it was a sample that I got in my Ipsy box or my Ipsy bag and it's lasted me for quite a while. Also, let me get a sip of my coffee. Okay, so now I'll just take a contouring brush, a small one. I'll put a little bit of product on there. See, it's not very much, and I will just go like this like under, right under my eye. And I'll do the same on the other side. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I just want my concealer to set and stay there. Again, y'all can see that I'm not doing it like right under my eye, like in this area right here. I'm doing it right here where most of the concealer is. And so it looks lighter drawing attention. It's supposed to draw attention. Again, I'm not a makeup artist. I just do my makeup for fun or, you know, to look cute, pretty, whatever. I'm not a professional. Once that is done, I will take some blush and this is Pacifica's Bronze Rose. Again, going back to finding out which undertone you have. I think finding your undertone is important um, not just to match your foundation and your concealer, but also to match what color blush looks good on your skin. I have found that more pastel, like light colored pinks are better with my skin tone than say something that is a deep like tangerine color or a very vibrant red or a very vibrant pink. It doesn't really look good um, with my skin color. so the pastel pinks, the rosy colors are more my thing. You know, it goes back to that whole like, ooh, rosy flushed cheeks. So I take a blush brush and I, once again, I tap and I smile. So you can see the apple part of my cheek. So now I've got like rosy little cheeks, as if I was playing outside in the cold, maybe. A little hint of bronzing. Do that too. Okay, now I'm gonna take my Ulta Beauty powder brush and then I'm gonna dust away the banana setting powder from under there. And I'm going to use my Bare Minerals Perfecting Veil and it is light to medium. And I'm just doing this. Typically, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't do it, sometimes I don't have time, and I just put on the SPF tinted foundation or tinted moisturizer, and I go out the door. But I like doing this too, just because I feel like it helps smooth everything out. Okay, doing that. Sweeps. Okay, that's done. Now I'm going to do my eyebrows. Sometimes I do my eyebrows um, right when I do my eyes. Sometimes I wait till the end. It just depends what mood I'm in. I'm going back to my Bare Minerals, um, the Power Neutrals, and I'm, now I'm gonna take my Angle Ultra Brush and I'm gonna go into this light, what color is that? Executive Brown color, and I'm going to fill in my eyebrows. I don't, I follow my eyebrows and my shape of my eyebrows 
just as they are. I don't try to recreate a new shape, but they're very sparse and so I like to darken them up a little bit. So I start with the angled brush here and I go that way. I fill them in to where the hair is the thickest. And it's funny because all of my friends, like my close group of girlfriends that I have, and y'all look, you can see that even though I'm filling it in, I still have like a lighter spot. And that's because I don't have any hair there because high school me was dumb and over plucked, shaved, whatever. So, you know, I butchered my eyebrows. Okay, now we're gonna go to the next one. And again, we're following the shape, just filling them in. But my girlfriends are like your eyebrows. I love your eyebrows. How do you make your eyebrows do a peak? And I always, I sometimes, even though I really try to be nice sometimes, I have RBF, so my face doesn't think nice thoughts, I guess. And sometimes like I'll make my eyebrow go up like that. And my friends are like, how do you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. The one time that I got Botox, I only got it done once. Whenever I went in to get it, I told them, I said, okay, look, I know that Botox like freezes, paralyzes the muscles or whatever, but I need to be able to do my eyebrow like this. So I said, do not make my eyebrow look like I can't move it because I really just, it's part of my facial features and I don't want that to go away. All right, let me see if I can't darken it up. Y'all, why do your eyebrows never exactly match? Why? Okay, that's as good as we're getting today. Y'all, I'm so blind, so I apologize that I'm like bending over, but I have to get this close, like my face this close to the mirror because I can't see without my glasses, I, I can't. But they're part of my anatomy. Anatomy! See anemone, anemone, Anyway, anatomy. They are part of my anatomy. Um, I've had them since second grade. I I like myself better with glasses and without glass, glasses. Oh, I can't talk today, y'all. What is happening? Whew. Anyway, um, but I've had them since second grade and I really just love them. I like how I look in glasses than without glasses. And then I have dry eyes. So every time that I've tried to use contacts, like every time I blink, I can feel them sliding down. And I know once you get used to wearing them, you probably don't even notice that sensation anymore, but I can't get over it. I'm OCD like that, I notice that. And I just think I'm cuter with glasses on than not. So yeah, okay. Now I'm going to do, where is my mascara? Mascara. Maybe it would help if I put my glasses on and I can see. All right, I thought I got my mascara out y'all and I don't know what I did with it. Huh. Well, we're gonna pause this for a minute while I find out where my mascara is because I can't, I can't finish my face without it. Oh, we almost had a crisis. I couldn't find my mascara for a moment. And oh, no, mm -mm, nobody was gonna be happy if I lost my mascara, especially me. All right, so I'm using Beauty Counters Better Than Black Mascara. And I love this mascara. They had a volumizing and a lengthening. And they pretty much changed up the formula, combined it the two. And y'all, I love, I love, love, love everything about this mascara. It is wonderful. My favorite mascara used to be, and probably still is, and it's lasted me a little while, um, but Le Petit Brush Mascara from Bare Minerals. 
and it's hot pink. The bottle or the tube that it comes in is hot pink and silver. Um, and it's like $22, $26, something like that. But I really like that mascara. Again, Bare Minerals is also cruelty free and, um, and tries to be clean. So I really like them. I still use them pretty often. Also, if you're interested in finding out what companies are cruelty free or conscious with like sustainability or use cleaner ingredients, I strongly suggest that you visit your Ulta website and you can look for conscious beauty and it'll break them down between or it'll break them down by companies that are cruelty free, Leaping Bunny certified and um, sustainability and clean beauty. It'll list all of those brands on there. You will be surprised to see that a lot of your big name cosmetic companies that you're shelling out lots and lots of money for are not Leaping Bunny cruelty free products, are not interested in sustainability, and are definitely not interested in reducing the amount of chemicals that they are putting in their products. And y'all, if you did not know this, your skin is your largest organ. It is your first line of defense against, against disease, pathogens, bacteria, um, chemicals, stuff like that. So you really should be taking care of your skin. And it roughly takes about 60 seconds. Maybe it's a little bit less, I can't remember. For your skin to absorb whatever it is that you're putting on there. So um, the formaldehyde, as in the stuff that morticians use to embalm, to embalm um, the dearly beloved departed, that's what I meant to say, not beloved, I meant to say departed. Um, you're putting that on your skin. It is highly toxic and you don't want it on your body. There are so many chemicals that are linked to cancers. They're endocrine disruptors, your thyroid, that's what that stuff is, and um, like your reproductive organs. If you are struggling to get pregnant and you have to go see a specialist, like a reproductive specialist, one of the things that they tell you to stay away from is like fragrances and perfumes because the chemicals that they have that make them up are known disruptors of your reproductive organs. So just take that into consideration with the products that you're using every single day because maybe using them once in a while is not a big day, not a big deal. But if you're using your lotion, the same lotion every single day, 365 um, days a year and multiple times a day, like your hand creams, things like that, it, it starts to add up. It really does. So just think about that the next time that you're out there buying um, beauty products. Anyway, my mascara is done. As you can see, they look long. They look thicker. I like it. They're black, better black. That's what this color is. Now I'm going to go to my lips, my beautiful full lips that God blessed me with. I get these from my daddy in case anybody is curious. So I am using NYX. It is, no, I didn't want to do this. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do red lips today because I like red lips. So I am using sugar and it is matte as hell. So instead of shiny, it's matte. And I really like that. I thought that was cool. And it is in shade Scarlet O'Hara. Y'all gone with the wind. Do you know who that is? Okay, well, awesome. I love playing up my lips. I think it's one of my best features. So I like drawing attention to them. So this is also a cruelty-free product. And something that I found out just from like personal use, if you wake up and you're pressed for time, do a little bit of concealer, put on your mascara and put on bright, bold lips. Put it on, I promise you. You will feel like you put in a lot of time for your makeup. You really, really do. All right, y'all, 
I'm done. My face is done. What do you think? I love the lips. I'm kind of messed up right here. That's okay. Okay. So my face is done for Sunday. I'm glad that you guys stopped by. Oh, another thing, it makes your teeth look really white. See? White teeth. Um, I'll say this halo light probably helps with that. I really like it. Okay, so that was my Sunday makeup tutorial for you guys. I hope you like it. I hope each of you has a wonderful work week, school week, whatever it is that you're doing. I hope it's amazing. I thank you guys for stopping by. Um, and I hope you remember to take some time out for A, yourself. So Self-care is really important. But I hope that you, more importantly, take some time out of your, your day, your schedule to connect with God, to connect with your spirituality. Um, you're not alone. He walks with you even when you don't walk with him. He does not desert you. Huh. Hey, everybody, this is Maverick. He does not desert you. He will not abandon you. He loves you. Um, and if you're hurting, if you're battling depression, if you have the same type of thoughts that I had at the beginning of this tutorial, I strongly recommend that you reach out to somebody. Those things, um, you, no one should be having those thoughts. No one should be thinking that life would be better if they were gone. So I strongly suggest that you reach out to somebody that you trust or you find out, <laughs> see him in the background, or you find, um, you know, Google it, Google therapists in your area and I, just go talk to someone. I, I, I will never regret the decision of taking the time to research and make appointments with someone that I could talk to who is helping get me back on the track that I need to be. So I love you guys. God loves you guys. Hope you have a blessed week and I'll be back next Sunday. Hope to see you then. If you like my channel, please be sure to subscribe and you'll get a little alert whenever I decide to do or upload a video. Thanks you guys. Have a great day.